What's going on, Tar Heel Nation? It is your favorite North Carolinian, Ross the Tar Heel. And in this huddle, baby, we're going to talk about the number one seeded North Carolina Tar Heels taking on the 16th seeded, 17 and 15 Wagner Seahawks out of the Northeast Conference in the first round of the NCAA tournament. The game will be televised by CBS at 245 on March 21st. Now, the Wagner Seahawks were the sixth seed in the Northeast Conference Tournament and got an automatic bid after running the table. Then they follow that up by beating the Howard Bison in the first four-in game out in Dayton, Ohio, 71-68, to with only seven scholarship players. Yes, you heard that stinking right. And they've been playing with those same seven dudes for about two months now. And the biggest story of that game was none other than the junior guard Melvin Council Jr., who finished with 21 points on 10 for 18 shooting and one for two from beyond the arc. Council, like literally, looked in large portions of the game like the best player on the floor. He consistently beated his guy off the dribble, and he got to the bucket. Julian Brown gave the Seahawks 15 by going three for four from three, and Keontae Lewis and Tayron Allen both added 10 points apiece as Wagner blew a 17-point lead. They were up 17 like multiple times in this basketball game, and they held on to beat the Howard Bison by three. Now, Wagner shot 52.7% from the floor, and they shot 47.1% from three-point range, but they were out-rebounded by the Howard Bison 36 to 28, but they dished out 16 assists on the night, so they kind of even those things out, if you will. Council's dribble penetration and his kickouts, especially to Julian Brown, were huge in this ball game. So now that we know who the Hills are playing, let's go ahead and dive into this thing. So some interesting stats. Wagner last made the NCAA tournament in 2003 as a 15 seed when the Seahawks were eliminated by Pitt in the first round. And Wagner this year was 0-2 in quad one games. Now, the Wagner Seahawks are led by second-year head coach Donald Copeland, who is 32-28 overall at Wagner. The Seahawks' leading scorer is the aforementioned 6'4", 185-pound junior guard Melvin Council Jr., who is averaging 14.6 points per game, 5.7 rebounds, and 3.4 assists. He's shooting 38.3% from the field and only 25.9% from three he was hooping, though, against Howard. Then their six foot five, 200 pound junior guard, Tehran Allen, who is averaging 10.8 points per game, 5.1 rebounds, and one assist. He's shooting 40.4% from the floor and 47.3% from beyond the arc. Then they have six foot one, 190 pound sophomore guard, Julian Brown, who's averaging 9.5 points per game. Three rebounds and 1.7 assists. He's shooting 35.3% from the floor and 34.5% from three. The Seahawks then have six foot one, 175 pound junior guard Javier Esquerra, who is averaging 7.1 points per game, 3.9 rebounds, and 4.3 assists. He's shooting 33.8% from the field and 31.4% from beyond the arc. Javier played the entire stinking game last night, and though he made a couple of big shots, like that buzzer beater, as the ball got tipped back, it went by, you know, uh, Howard, uh, they smacked the ball out of his hands, went back past the half-court line, he went and picked it up, came to the top, and uh, knocked one down as the buzzer went off, dude, to like keep that lead going, so he made a couple of big shots, but this kid struggled mightily against the press later in the game as Howard was making its push. And then lastly, they have the six foot nine, 255 pound sophomore forward, Keontae Lewis, who's averaging 6.6 points per game, 5.4 rebounds, and 0.5 assists. He's shooting 54.8% from the floor and is a 61.8% free throw shooter. Now, the Seahawks literally go seven deep. Every scholarship player still available 
is on deck. So that's who they play. That's who they played against Howard. That's who Carolina could expect to play in this first round matchup. Now, and now that we've taken a look at the opponent, let's look at those mighty Tar Heels from North Carolina who are led by head coach Hubert Davis, who was in his third year at his alma mater, amassing a 76 and 30 record, which is good for a 717 winning percentage. Coach Davis this year was honored as the 2024 ACC Coach of the Year and well deserved. If I might add, now the Hills' leading scorer is six foot, one hundred and eighty pound first team, AP All American R. J. Davis, who is averaging twenty one point four points per game, three point eight rebounds, and three point five assists. He's shooting forty three point one percent from the floor and forty point six percent from three. Then there's the six foot eleven, two hundred and forty pound grad forward Armando Baycott who's averaging 14.1 points per game, 10.2 rebounds, and 1.5 assists. He's shooting 54.7% from the floor, and he comes in as a 77.7% free throw shooter. Then the Heels have the 6'7", 235-pound junior forward, Harrison Ingram, who's averaging 12.1 points per game, 9 rebounds, and 2.2 assists. He's shooting 42.4% from the floor, and 37% from three. Then there's the six foot five, 195 pound senior guard, Core Mac Ryan, who is averaging 11.2 points per game, 2.8 rebounds, and 1.3 assists. He's shooting 37.7% from the floor and 34.2% from three. And last but not least, we have the six foot one. 180-pound freshman point guard, Elliot Cadeau, who's averaging 7.6 points per game, 2.2 rebounds, and 4.2 assists. He's shooting 42.7% from the field and only 18.2% from three. So that's not necessarily his cup of tea, as we all know, at this stage of his North Carolina career. Now, the Heels will bring out Seth Trimble, Jalen Withers, and Jalen Washington off of the bench as their key contributors. So now that we've looked at both of these teams, let's go get into Russ's three keys to victory. And key number one is going to be on the ball pressure. I would love to see the Heels put one of their best defenders on Javier Esquerra. There were multiple times where he struggled to efficiently bring the ball up the floor and he made some questionable decisions, especially late in that ball game, that could have cost Wagner the game. Like, no stinking joke, man. He was struggling at times. Now, the fact that he played all 40 minutes of that game additionally may have played a factor in his sloppy play late. You know, tired legs, um, you know, your mind starts to go, if you will. He's not the greatest ball handler already, so he's not going to beat you off the dribble or anything like that. And I really think that the Heels may be able to force some quick turnovers that lead into transition points just by getting into Escada's chest. It also doesn't hurt to press him often because that may keep the ball out of Council's hands. You know, you'll notice that the offense runs differently when Escada brings the ball up. It becomes a half court set. They set their offense, move the ball around, and then they look for some kind of dribble penetration or a shot. Whereas when Council ends up with the ball in his hand, right, he really pushes. He's the one guy that's going to try to go from rim to rim. All right. So I think you get into Iskata's chest and, uh, you know, you can force some turnover. So my key to the game off the jump is going to be to press the ball, especially when it's in his hands on the ball pressure. Key number two. Feed the slime. I think this goes without saying. Wagner has seven scholarship players, like was already mentioned. Their lone big man is the six foot nine, two hundred and fifty five pound Keontae Lewis, who is someone that UNC needs to attack early with Armando down on the blocks. If they try to protect Lewis as their basically only big man by not having him guard Armando, well, then that's all the more reason to stink and go down low and feed him, right? Feed the ball into the slime as he is the biggest guy on the floor 
in this game and let him go to work on Lewis or whoever is trying to guard him and draw some early fouls. Armando Baycott should have an absolute field day in this basketball game, but Carolina cannot start like they did against State and settle for jumpers. Key number two, off the rip, man, feed the slime. And key number three, I'm going to keep it simple, man. Cormac and Harrison. This is the perfect game for Cormac and Harrison to get jump-started once again, if you will. They were almost non-existent, seemingly, during the ACC championship game against NC State, and we missed both of their contributions on both ends greatly. Once Mondo gets going, once they fed it down low and he is just working and stinking cooking, right, we've built a comfortable lead, we need to let these guys get some work in, man. We know already what RJ can do. He's going to hoop, okay? This isn't the game where he needs to show out, all right? If it is, we have much bigger issues. We need to have Cormac and Harrison find the bottom of the net because they will absolutely be the dictators of how far we go in this tournament. RJ can do a ton, but he can only do so much. We need them to play well, and it starts Thursday night. So that'll take us to Russ's score prediction. Now, Wagner allegedly plays at a slower pace. That's what they say. But they were not scared to get out and run against Howard, at least, like I said, when Council had the ball in his hands. I can imagine that that will change ever so slightly against the heels as they can't possibly believe that they're going to be able to run with Carolina. I expect Wagner to actually slow the pace of this game down and attempt to utilize every second possible of the shot clock to minimize the possessions, especially if they start getting into foul trouble. That is, unless Carolina can speed them up with their on-the-ball pressure. If Carolina pressures the ball, you create points off of turnovers, and Mondo gets a steady diet down low, we could be looking at all 15 players on UNC's roster playing in an NCAA tournament game. And I really do think that that's what we're going to see. Council is a decent player, but he hasn't played against a defender the likes of Cormac or Seth. North Carolina walks away from this one, getting Wagner out of their game plan, and the Heels advance to the second round by beating the Seahawks 92 to 62. So let me know what you think about my score prediction, Tar Hill Nation. Am I onto something, or am I sitting on the end of the bench with my bifocals on and just happy to be wearing a jersey? If you haven't already, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And shout out to my little hooligans for all that they do, helping me keep these lights on. Live stream is currently up in the air, bro. I'm trying to get off work, but I'm unsure at this time, so I will definitely let you guys know about that. And before we get out of here, I just wanted to shout out an event for a friend of the channel, Mr. Kurt Pearson and his daughter, Ava Pearson, who's currently a senior at North Carolina. The event's called The Pasta with Purpose. That will tentatively be held on April 25th at the Carolina Club, which is attached to the Alumni Club on campus. Now, this is a fundraiser for the Lineberger Comprehensive Cancer Center in honor of the late, great Eric Montross. The cost of the all-you-can-eat pasta meal is $14 plus tax and gratuities, and the Carolina Club is giving back $11 per person, which will go to the Cancer Center, man. So shout out to the Pasta with Purpose and shout out to the Carolina Club for putting on this event because everybody knows that cancer sucks. So huge shout out to those guys, man, for this awesome opportunity to help a good cause. Anyone interested in attending simply needs to call the Carolina Club at 919-962-1101 and make a reservation. Great event for a great cause. Not affiliated with this channel at all, okay, but it's a great opportunity for uh, you know those in the area to to help with um, you know something that I'm sure has touched a lot of people's lives, and that is unfortunately cancer. So great opportunity to uh, do a good thing, man. So check that out. But <clears throat> when it's all said and done, baby, the run starts here at Tar Hill Nation. I'll catch you on the next one, baby.